Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. I thought I would do an experiment really fast. I was I was getting ready to shoot um, a Patreon video and I had an idea. And as I was trying to grab out paper, um, the idea came to me, which was, does paper really matter? The quality of the paper. So this is completely random. This is just regular photocopy paper. It's it's thick though. It's, it's prop, not paper paper like... Uh, uh, what would you call it, um, like the thinnest paper that you could get, but it would be more like, um, uh, what would you call it, uh, I don't know, it's definitely, it's not Bristol, this is just copy paper, but it's like a thick copy paper that you would get at like FedEx or one of those, like if they have different um, weights, so uh, if they had messed up and printed it on just their regular paper that was in the 11 by 17 feed, and uh, I thought what I would do is I'm going to take a Hunt 102 and I'm going to try to ink on this. I'm not saying that you would want to use this for pages, but people get very hung up on um, not only tools. I knew my next door neighbor, like literally as I was setting up, my next door neighbor's dog started barking. It's like, for whatever reason, I, I can never start a video without like <laughs> that dog barking. Um, but uh, yeah, so so again, this isn't a recommendation that you would want to ink pages on this type of paper. But I thought it would be interesting to see what are the characteristics of just paper, you know, something that's not designed for Hunt 102. These tend to, uh, if you try it on different types of paper, they will tear and bleed and stuff like that. But you would be surprised what these will actually work on. And and, and so uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to liberate you a little bit from your tools and this this mindset of, of that you need specific things to do. Um, quality art because as we know I mean you, you know you take someone like Jim Lee or Frazetta or you know I use the reference of Jimi Hendrix uh, even though he's a, a guitarist um, these people are just great at what they do and you can give them any kind of tool of their trade and they're going to be able to produce uh, something of quality from it and and they may have to acclimate to that tool but uh Again, you, you rule the tool. The tool doesn't rule you. So um, I'm just using my old Mississippi mud. I didn't put any water in it, um, but I did take it out of the bottle. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very lightly just hold. This is a Hunt 102 Speedball Crow Quill and just a little crappy pen holder. I'm going to try to see if I can, one, just get a line out of it. Okay, so it does it does write on the paper. And my ink is flowing decent. This is an older, not an older nib, but um, this nib is, is getting ready to be switched out. I probably wouldn't use it for a full day's work. Um, you can see the line is a little thicker. My camera tends to shoot a little dark, so it sort of makes everything look more weird. But it's not tearing the paper yet. Um, so these lines are down, though. I'm just not putting pressure on the pen. Very, very little. On a scale from 1 to 10, the pressure is probably at like a point. Two five, like just not even that. Honestly, the nib is actually kind of just doing it itself, like the weight of the pen. So, all right, I'm surprised already that this paper um, isn't bleeding. I I see a little splitting with the lines. I know that you don't have a super detailed view of this yet, but okay. So when I throw lines, it does actually bleed just the tiniest bit, but it's not horrible. Let me see if you can see that. Hopefully, it's in focus. There's a little tiny bit of dimpling or or like a, like the paper towel effect here, but it's not that bad, all things considered. Now, would I again? Would I want to do something important on this paper? No, but is it horrible? Eh. I've had I've had professional artboard at this quality before. Honestly, some some even worse, and I think all of you know and can relate to that if you've tried to ink things on like. The old Blue Line Pro. I don't know how the quality of that is now, but this is actually better than Blue Line Pro already, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but now the thing is, is where you're going to come into trouble with with tools like this on this kind of paper would be something like this. Okay, like if I really push down hard and then flick or try to kind of tear it across the paper, you can see that there's a little more bleeding. So, so my recommendation to you on all paper is to try to have a lighter touch. You can still, I, I mean, you, you get to the point where you really understand the quality of the paper and you're able to sort of um, vary your your pressure based on what's going on with the the, the, 
tools that you're using. If I have a nib that's not getting uh, nib, meaning the, the pen tip, uh, getting good lines, like sharp lines, sometimes I'll just try it at different angles and see, okay, well, can I get uh, 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 a thinner line from this angle? So little things like that. I mean, uh, I need to wipe the tip of the pen off real quick. I'm resisting the urge to dip it in water because I want to just go with old ink right now. Okay, it might not have had ink on it. But um, yeah, I got this dog next door seriously drives me crazy when I'm shooting these videos. It's so frustrating. I don't know why he has to bark like right when I start a video. Um, <laughs> patrons know what I'm talking about between helicopters, planes, and uh, the dog next door. So, okay. Now, now, this is the other test that you can do on paper to see if it's good or bad. And again, I wouldn't recommend uh, inking uh, something nice on this type of paper, at least with these tools so far. I, you know, well, and see, this is the thing, and, and why this is an interesting example. You might, some people might think it's pointless, but I've had, I've had people come up to me at conventions with like pencil prints. So something that maybe that someone got printed at like FedEx, Kinko's kind of thing uh, on print paper, quote unquote. And they are like, hey, can you ink this or can you ink a part of it? I, you know, like I would love to just see your inks on like this face or something like that. And I've done it. And um, even Alex Sinclair, who sits next to me, sometimes will color stuff on really, really questionable paper. So this paper actually, amazingly enough takes black okay it is soaking into the paper a little bit the test is if god this dog barking constantly drives me nuts <laughs> oh my god uh it's so frustrating i i know you can't hear it as loud as i can in person um but uh what you want to watch for is um absorption meaning um when you take your ink and you put down a line what i'm seeing it do is it's soaking into the paper and again with the the leveling on a camera, it might not be as noticeable, but this is still laying down fairly black. It's not turning gray. It's not turning like a blotchy gray or a really watered down look. So all things considered, just this standard, you know, laser copy print paper, it, it takes black okay, you know, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being like it taking it killer. It's, it's like a five and a half or a six. It's not bad. It is absorbing into it. I can literally see the ink though. When I rub it across the paper, it goes, it soaks right into it. Cause what it is, is there's no finish on this. Now what's funny is once sometimes things are printed on the other side, the finish does change because of the way that it lays down the ink. Um, this was a, uh, deceased page. I'm not going to try to ink bits right now. I don't really want to get into that, but see the blue actually kind of affects it more where it's like, it's, it absorbs a little tiny bit differently on this side, but it is still doing the same thing. It's just, it's, mm, yeah, you can see the pores of the paper a little bit. I don't know if the camera can get it, but like at certain angles, there's like a little bit of a texture on the paper. Um, so, and then let's try microns. I think microns will work fine on this. Pigma pen microns, um, will, will be pretty good to go. So if you did pencil a drawing on paper, like oh, do you see it's actually soaking through the paper? That's funny. So you, you would not want to, well, it's funny that it soaked through, it soaked through here on the side that was printed blue more than these, which were heavier strokes. I laid down more ink here and it didn't seem to actually, if I set the board down, I get a little sense of it, but that's not a huge deal overall because you're probably not going to work on both sides of paper. So this is a number one micron. And really, really the moral of this story is really give the tools that you have an opportunity to work for you. Don't just write it off as, I got a bad brush, I got bad paper. I mean, sometimes it does happen, or I got a bad croquel nib, because um, it's not always the case. You just need to find out what the parameters are, like the, you know, what are the limits, what are the, I mean, Micron goes down on this fine. So if you wanted to do a more liney piece, and then also if you had Micron brush pens for filling in the blacks, you would be fine.
like this is the a micron uh, brush pen yeah I mean this would be fine you could do sketches on this and and have re real nice results and um, yeah I don't I don't really see any problem with it again I've I've had DC two ply Bristol this is a few years ago was was way worse than this it was terrible paper and we we struggled with that on and off for a few years it was real bad we were trying out papers and all kinds of things and I don't know what they ultimately ended up using now I've been meaning to ask them just out of curiosity because I, I find that their paper is pretty decent but anyway I hope that that gives you a little insight into using tools and using paper and really to just be adventurous with it again if there was a moral to the story it would be like I was like cat hair everywhere um uh try things and and then see what what are the like what's the sliding scale in terms of of usage is there no use is there a little bit of use is there a particular use that it would maybe work for and you know try to maximize your your money for the job at hand like if i was going to knock out a hundred sketches just so that i was going to maybe sell at a comic book convention and i needed cheaper paper maybe i could buy a ream of this for like 13 bucks a uh, ream meaning you know 50 or 100 pages um as, as opposed to spending 50 to 100 dollars on like you know high-end bristol board this would be fine it's it's Probably like if 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 regular comic book paper is two ply, this is maybe like a point five. It wouldn't be referred to as that. It's probably one hundred or two hundred pound print printer paper, color laser, copier paper. Um, but it's not too bad, honestly. I could get by on this and do some pretty nice stuff. I, I would be nervous to to do you know a thirty hour piece on it or something like that. But for just um, you know. I could cut this into four sheets and, and do headshots, you know, like, uh, I don't know what the dimensions would be exactly. It would be, uh, five by 9.5. You could get five or four and five by nine, 5.5 .5 by 9.5. Uh, if I'm doing the math right. Um, quarter, quarter sheets, like, like this, this size thing. And you could do like busts, you know? Doctor Doom and uh, you know like sell them at, at shows and and make some dough. So anyway, all right. Hopefully that just gives you a little bit of an adventurous spirit as we wrap up Inktober and uh, Patreon. I'll be doing another video for you in just a minute. So all right, have a great day. And uh, I'm trying to come up with an idea for Super Fun Sunday. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. All right, later.